go. Hi everyone, how are you all doing? Hope everyone's okay. Um, this is our now regular 1pm slot. Um, we're going to be live, as we've told you the last few days, um, every day. Okay, so um, it might not be a full tutorial, it might not be um, you know, a, an actual class or anything, but we will post some while, uh, while this lockdown and all is happening. How are you all? Is anybody there? Say hello if you are. Anybody watching? Nobody there yet? Um, I'm just going to... Um... I'm here. <laughs> oh, Sarah's here. Sarah's here, yeah. Oh, Carrie's in. Oh, hi, Carrie. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we're going to do this um, live every day, as we've hi, said Sean. before. Hi, Sean. Um, just to let you know what's going on. Um, first thing we're going to tell you about, actually, is we've made the decision that we um, we need to be socially responsible. And a lot of them in the vulnerable section, and so, therefore, we're going to shut the shop, okay? Um, we are still doing online um, we will still be doing these videos and tutorials, um, but the shop is going to be closed to the public as of today. So when we shut it through today, that's it for the next few weeks, okay? Um, you won't be able to pop in and, and buy anything. Um, you will still be able to give us a call, okay? So um, the shop number is 02921. One five two six two eight, and I'll put all of this onto a onto a post, so you you've still got it. But you can ring us. I'm going to have that number diverted to my mobile, so we'll be able to um, answer your calls, and you can order from us. And while we're still allowed to, we will deliver to you. We will do no contact delivery, so um, we'll knock to let you know we're there. Put the parcel on your doorstep, and then we'll back off, okay, before you um answer the door. Um, hi Jen <laughs> um, so yeah so we will back off um, we'll wait for you to answer the door but we'll make sure we stand sort of good two metres back we'll wait for you to answer the door so we know you've got your goods safely um, and then um, and leave you to it okay so we will still be doing deliveries but yeah we've had to take the take the decision that we're really we need to safeguard everybody and after the ridiculous scenes um, that we've all seen over the weekend of people just thinking this is a holiday and they're going down to the beach and what was it? I think they said online today they had the most visitors they'd ever had in, in one day on Saturday. You know, um, this is that's not being responsible, guys. You know, we really need to protect ourselves, everybody, not just ourselves. But those of us who are fitting well need to be thinking about what, what if we um, passed it on to somebody who wasn't fitting well. So shop's going to be shut from today. Um, horrible decision. We've not liked having to do it, but we feel that you guys are too important to us to... Um, to carry on opening to the public even though we're taking extra measures and things so um so but uh we're still here for you guys okay we are still hi linda oh we're missing you so much oh honey. so much really i hope you're okay hope you're okay we will text later um so yeah so we're going to shut the shop we will still do um online our website is still up and running um, we're going to spend the time while we're shut getting as much as we can onto the website. Um, I'm going to rope the boys in because, God, they're bored. My two middle boys, Drew and Josh, they are they work in a restaurant, so the restaurant's now shut. So they're having to um, find ways to fill their time. And one of my boys is even more of an alcoholic. Uh, alcoholic? No, workaholic. <coughs> he's not. Well, he might be an alcoholic. <laughs> he's more of a workaholic than I am. So, um, yeah, he's going to need to be kept occupied. So um, we're going to try and get as much as we can online. Um, so, yeah, going back today, we are going to start other crochet along in a little bit. I'm going to give everybody sort of five five minutes or so, just a few minutes, just to, <coughs> just to come online. Um, and then I'll get started. So today we're going to... Tomorrow I'll do a little tutorial all about English paper piecing um, and there will be a worksheet um, and a template sheet that I can email to you, um, PDF -y to you if you want for that. Um, <laughs> Sean was saying this morning that um, we'll just do tutorials like Monday, Wednesday and Friday, but I won't cope with that. You know this. I will go stir crazy really quickly. So I'm going to try where possible to do something every day for you. Um, it might be that it, sometimes it's a sew along or a crochet along, other times it'll just be me rabbiting and showing you a technique. Um, so tomorrow we're gonna do some English paper piecing. Wednesday, I'm gonna do the 3D illusion block, which we talked about before. So that will be a sew along. So I'm gonna put all the details up for you so that you know what to cut out. Um, 
sorry that's Wednesday Thursday no idea at the moment but I will come up with something and Friday we're going to do Manx patchwork hi Dave hi <laughs> that's your wife's hands there <laughs> um so yeah so that's kind of the plan for this week okay so shop's going to be shut from today we will do deliveries still for you you can call us or you can go online okay and we'll do our best to get stuff out to you if you don't quite know what it is you need you can call us and we can video chat like this individually with you and go around the shop okay because as long as it's only me or Sarah in the shop um, and we post it all out to you um, you should all be safe for now okay so today we're going to have a look at learning to crochet now we've had lots and lots of people ask us about this um, so I'm going to do a bit of a how-to for you to get you started hopefully you all have this little leaflet now this was given to us um, all about three or four years ago actually um, when we did yarn shop day but it's actually one of the best um, sort of little guides I've ever seen of how to crochet it's really nice and visual it explains it really really well. what we're gonna do is hopefully you've all got your crochet hook and a ball of wool to hand okay if you haven't I'm gonna give you just a couple of minutes to get that while I just talk you through some little bits so I'm gonna be cro I'm gonna be using a some chunky wool and a six mil crochet hook okay and that's because the stitches are a lot bigger which means I can um, show you more easily um, how to do this, okay? Um, I'm also, um, sorry, my brain's gone. Um, I'm also sort of gonna go through the basic stitches, okay? Um, but hopefully if you, right, I've gotta find the right words today. <laughs> the hook that you use for your wool depends on what size wool you do so if I show you the band here so I'm using a chunky which means I would use a six mil hook okay so I don't know if you say so it says video in today because obviously I need both hands for this don't know if you can see can you see it says six mil down here this was the ball band off this ball of blue wool and it says six mil if it's a double knit it's almost certainly going to say four mil there if it's a super chunky it might okay even though it's got knitting needles on it, that is the same for crochet hooks, okay? So you will learn to your tension and everything and you can adjust your tension, hook size for your tension. But now as you're beginning, don't worry about that, okay? Just go with whatever size hook it says there for the wool that you're using. And like I said, with the <coughs> for this on little online tutorial, I'm going to do chunky because it's so much easier for you guys to see the... Um, the size of the wool and the stitches okay so i think sarah's going to move behind me so that you guys can see a little bit better hopefully you can read really see it over my shoulder now and it'll be look more like it, how you're doing it now obviously i'm a right hander okay so everything's going to be done right handed you need to reveal so what we're going to start with is on your little on your little sheet here can you see it says slip knot and chain so almost all projects start with a chain okay because that's how you get your stitches to work into okay hi chris nice to see you haven't got the hang of this hopefully you will after this jackie island uh, been in. hi everybody hopefully you're uh, all uh, okay so we're going to start with a really simple slip knot and chain how you hold your hook is entirely up to you okay hopefully now you can either be a, a spoon or a pen okay it's how we put it so I'm, a, I'm a, I tend to be a pen person I hold my hook like this Sarah is an over the topper she's a spoon person like that how you hold it is in t is absolutely up to you okay it's um it's not there are no crochet police just like there are no quilt police okay so don't worry too much about how you hold it it's about what's comfortable for you okay so you're going to start with by doing a simple slip knot and that slip knot, okay, so Sarah's just going to get comfy so she can hold her phone, okay? Slip knot. You've got the tail end here, okay? Can you see the tail end? You're going to make a circle and then put your fingers in the circle, grab hold of that tail end and pull through, okay? And don't pull too far because now you can make this bigger or smaller. So I'm going to do that again for you, okay? So make a circle. 
put your hands fingers into the circle and grab hold of the tail and then pull through and you should have a slip knot okay you're a spoon <laughs> i'm a pen not a spoon <laughs> okay and there you go you've got your slip knot so i'm going to do that one more time so make a circle put your fingers into the the hook loop grab hold of the tail and pull through okay so the reason you want to do a slip knot rather than just tying the wool on is because you need to be able to adjust it okay so it is quite important to get a slip knot rather than just tying a knot okay and making a loop you're then going to insert your crochet hook into that loop okay and you want to pull it up but not too tight can you see it should have plenty of play on the hook and that's technically your first stitch okay how you hold your the wool in your in your hand Again, it's absolutely perfect choice. There are lots and lots of... Carrie's got a slip knot. Yay! Well done, Carrie. <laughs> How you hold your, your wool is entirely up to you. There, uh, there are lots of different ways. You'll see lots of different tutorials out there that say you have to wrap it around your little finger seven times and then do some sort of complicated weaving. It doesn't matter. It's what's comfortable for you. Okay, It's what's comfortable and how you feel your tension is. And I've been crocheting forever, as Linda will tell you, since I was eight and I'm now 108, so at least 100 years. Um, I have put the wool between my index and my middle finger like that. And I work into this space here. I tend to sort of just close my fingers round the tail. Now you can, if you want, wrap the wool here. It's entirely up to you. But however you're comfortable, OK, it really doesn't matter as long as you have control of the of the yarn. So chain stitch which again as I was saying will be the basis of everything okay so you're going to wrap you're going to dip the hook down like that sorry excuse me just a minute we've got somebody waving through the window <laughs> um, you're going to dip the hook down so that the wool is wrapped from back to front so you'll hear me say going over the top and that's what that means so the wool is over the top okay when you first start out you will find that you're you're making the wool do the work okay but actually this hand your left your left hand if you're a right hander wants to stay as stationary as possible and you really want to make the hook do the work so i'm going to dip under so that wool comes through like that and you might find you need to hold the tail to start with you're going to pull the hook through and can you see how the hook dips down as it goes through the stitch so we're going to go wrap we're going to pull through so it dips down through like that and wrap and down through okay wrap and down through okay does that make sense so far how you're doing with that hi Viv now thank you for joining us and so you wrap the wool around your right hand as I would as if you were knitting I can't get right around but wrap my head round the left hand wool feed absolutely we have lots of knit lots of crochets who if they're knitters do it like this like they are knitting okay which is a lot easier because you've got muscle memory a lot easier for some people um 99.9% .9 of the time that will work it's only when you get to really complicated stitches that sometimes you need this hand this you know, the wool in the other hand but if that works for you Viv absolutely whatever Linda who works in the shop with us she's a really accomplished crocheter now and she does that she she uses it as knitting that way um it's slightly slower that way that's all if you want to get your speed it's worth trying to force yourself to hold the wool this way okay so I'm just going to show you that stitch again so you're going to wrap the wool round back to front so it comes over the top of the hook and you're going to pull it through okay so you're going to wrap top to over the top and pull through wrap and pull through and hopefully you can see so i'm keeping the hook quite facing towards me sort of quite horizontal at this point but then as you come to pull through it if i just try and pull that through it's not can you see it's not going to go through so what you want to do is dip the hook to make it go through so wrap and dip wrap and dip wrap dip wrap and dip 
Okay. How's that? How's everybody's finding that? You're all okay so far? Is that making sense? Okay, so, and you can see as the chain starts to get longer, I'm holding this steady because it's quite difficult. Those first few stitches, you've got nothing to hold on to because you, you need to have a little bit of tension on the work in order to be able to actually get the hook through. Because if this is hanging around and I just try and pull that through, that happens. <laughs> okay, so you can see, you know, there's no way unless you hold this steady. Okay, so I would suggest just keeping going like that for a little while until you've got a nice long chain until that starts to feel a little bit more natural okay so i'm wrapping i'm pulling wrapping and pull it oh it's because i'm so used to doing it fast slowing everything down is actually really quite difficult <laughs> doing it at really slow speeds okay so can you see you've got this nice long chain come in so we're going to wrap and pull through, wrap and pull through, okay? How's everybody doing with that? Everybody okay? So I can imagine that hands are full and you're not going to be able to ask. This will be online, obviously. This stays online on our Facebook page. So you can ask, ask lots of questions later if that helps. And um, I'll go back in and answer them, okay? So first stitch I'm going to show you is the one that if you've ever tried to crochet before lots of people um, were taught this one because it's what granny blankets and stuff were made out of and if I can just get Sarah to just zoom in on this what we're going to do is we're going to do the treble okay which is really the most basic of stitches the, it most 99% of patterns will have trebles in them okay we are using um, English obviously British tournament a lot of patterns out there are in American terminology and everything is slightly different, okay? So do double check that if you're looking at patterns, but all of this is in British terminology. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the treble bit, which is on page two of your little leaflet. Ah, oh, well done, Carrie. Okay, so hopefully I'm just going to talk you through the chain and what, what I, how when I'm teaching, how we, how we do it, okay? Can you see that each of these like little C shapes... Can you see there like if i take this out a second can you see it's like it's like a little v or a, like on you know v that way but because you're looking at it this way i always think of them as little c shapes that are all interlinked okay and you're we're going to be working into the top bit here can you see where that you can just see my finger through oh hang on can you see my finger through so that is where we when i say work into the chain that's where you're going to go so into there and then into there and into there and then into the top of that C okay so the first thing we do is I'm going to teach you a treble okay so I'm so just going to refocus a second so we're going to wrap the wool because it's a treble we're not going to work into this first stitch here okay we're going to count two down and we're going to work into the third stitch along so one two three and there's the third chain along can you see that so one, two, three, and there's the third chain. So you're not counting the loop that you never, the hook is in? No, no. So you never, ever count this stitch, this one here, okay? that it, That's not part of the chain. That's just your working stitch. So we're, when a pattern says um, work into the third, second stitch from the hook, you never, ever count this one here. It's always the ones long. So we're going to go into that third stitch there. So just to show you again, that's your first, your second, your third. Okay, so a treble. I'm going to wrap from front to back and I'm going to insert my hook there, okay? I'm then going to wrap the stitch again, wrap the wool, sorry, again, and pull through the chain. Okay, so can you see that the wool is now through that chain stitch there and I've got what looks like three stitches on my hook. I'm going to wrap again and I'm going to pull through the first two and again I'm dipping down as I pull through and then I'm going to wrap again and go through that last two so dip and dip and that's a treble okay and that stitch there that nice long stitch there is a treble okay oh yeah I imagine Jen is it different again in in um, the Netherlands is it um 
are you, do you have the same terminology as we do there or have you got different names again for it? Let us know. <laughs> OK, so treble again. So wrap and I'm going to into the next stitch, which is this one here. Okay, so I'm going to insert the hook in. I'm going to wrap front back to front and pull through the chain. So I've got three on my hook. I'm going to wrap. I'm going to pull through those first two. I'm going to wrap again and pull through those two. OK, so there's your treble. So it's wrap, insert into the next chain. So let me just before I do that, can you see, can you see that this stitch is in that chain there? So my next one along is just there. OK, so insert, wrap and pull through my hook, wrap and pull through the first two, wrap and pull through the second two. OK, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to work down this chain. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to do it nice and slowly and hopefully this will all make sense to you. So wrap and into the next one down the chain there. Wrap and pull through. OK, wrap and through the first two, wrap and through those last two. OK, can you see how that's now starting to grow? So here we go. So wrap, insert, wrap the wool, pull through, wrap the wool, pull through the first two, wrap the wool, pull through the last two. OK. How's everybody doing? Oh my God, now I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carrie. <laughs> right. OK. Jen, you've also never heard of double knit wool. Oh, had never heard of double knit wool. Oh, right. OK, you have different. Yeah, I guess it's like four ply and eight ply, I think is what they call finger double. Finger weight. Finger weight, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult, isn't it, when it's all translated from different languages? Right, Kerry, you're lost, my darling. So let's let's see if we can do this. So you've got the chain running along this way, OK? We're going to wrap the wool. We're going to insert into this next chain along. So it's going to try and go really close. Hopefully you can see. So we're going into this chain here, OK? I'm going to insert the hook from the front through to the back. I'm going to wrap and pull through. Wrap, pull through two, wrap pull through the last two okay lost we'll be looking at this again yeah remember this is going to be up on our facebook page so you can re-watch you can pause me do a little bit and everything so oh, can we do that in real life no you can't pause me in real life ha 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 so let's go again so i'm going to work all the way along this chain okay so wrap and in and pull up wrap through two wrap through two okay there's Meggie. There's Meg. Hi Meg. Hope you're okay, lovely. Insert, wrap and pull through. Wrap through two. Wrap through two. And you would work your way all the way along the along the chain. Okay, so wrap in and up. Wrap through two. Wrap through two. Okay. Yep. Is everybody all right with that? You're going to work your way down to the end I'm of the chain? I'm going to work your way at my work. It's just a couple of minutes. Uh, and once I've got to the end of the chain, um, we'll, I'll show you how to turn and go back the other way. OK, so I'm just going to go all the way down this chain. There we go. So now, remember, I've been crocheting for a very, very long time. So I know this might look quite fast, but this is, <laughs> this is quite slow speed for me. Um, it actually looks like I've put forward fast on it. <laughs> yeah, there's no fast forward on it. Ooh, let's get that wool. There we go. Okay, so we are. When I get towards the end, I'll Carrie slow back says, down. Do I only go three stitches in from the beginning? You do, lovely. Just when you first start. So why we did that was, so back at the beginning here, remember I went back in three stitches. This little bit of chain that pulls up makes the first stitch. Because if I'd have gone right into the very first one, it, this there wouldn't have been any space for the height of it. 
and it would have ended up with this tight little knot so that the chain sort of pulls round to make the first edge of the stitch. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, the rest of the chain, you're just going in each individual chain. So you can see I've been into this one and then you're going to go into the next one. It's Lady Gaga over there. And you're going to go into the next one. And I'm just working into the next chain along all the way down this chain. So there's my next one there. Angela. <laughs> Mine is full of holes already. It will be lovely. Remember, like when you weren't to drive, you didn't learn to drive a car in the first 10 minutes. OK, crochet is all about practice, just the same as any other skill. So just keep trying to get that movement going with your fingers and getting those stitches. OK. And then when I've got to the end of the chain, which is very shortly. Ah, cool. Glad you, that makes sense now, Carrie. So I'm going to this chain. Now, I don't expect you guys to be going as fast as I am in any way. You know, if you're just learning, then <clears throat> don't worry too much, okay? Now, this is a... Can you see here? It looks like you're coming towards the end, but it's very important to catch that last stitch, otherwise you will lose stitches, and then you end up with wonky sides, okay? Oh, is that what happens? That's what happens, yeah. Yeah, Sarah's not a fan of stitch markers and uh, <laughs> loses the <coughs> loses the edges of hers quite a lot, okay? That is now all the way along my chain. Now, you might not have had as long a chain as I, I had to start with, okay? When you get to the end, okay, so I say you might want to come out a little bit. When you get to the end, you are literally going to turn this so... You can see I'm on the left hand side now and I want to be on the right hand side. So I'm going to turn it so I'm now on the right hand side and I'm going to work my way across the top. OK, now this time, do you remember on the beginning we worked into the third stitch that to get the height? This time we need to make the height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two to start with. So that's back to the initial chain. So I'm going to take that out so you can see again. So I'm going to get chain one, two, and that kind of makes the height on the next row so that because if we'd have gone straight into here and started doing the trebles, you'd have ended up with this horrible little knot because you need to give it a bit of sort of space to breathe and grow. OK, so the chain at the beginning. Now, can you sit? Oh, I'm going to take the hook out so hopefully you can see. Can you see these little holes at the top here? OK. You see those little holes there? That's what we're going to be working into. OK, so we're not working into the chain like before, like on that first row. Now we're going to be working into these holes there. So back to treble. So wrap. You see, there's the little hole. So I'm going to insert my hook in. I'm going to wrap and pull through. Wrap through two wrap through two okay so we're going to wrap and can you see there's the whole little hole i'm looking for there okay insert my hook in wrap oh sorry excuse me it's because i'm going slowly there we go wrap and pull that yarn through so you've got three on your hook wrap go through two wrap and go through two okay i'm going to try that again so wrap there's the next little hole OK, can you see them? They're at the top. They're not these big holes down here. OK, they're the little ones at the top here. So we're going to push in and pull through. Wrap through two, wrap through the last two. So wrap in, pick up that wool. There we go. Wrap through two, wrap through two. And you're going to work your way right, all the way down that first row to get your second row. And you see now how quickly that's starting to grow. So this is your first row here and this is my second row. So I'm going to work my way all the way down that row. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, so we're going to work our way down that row. 
like that. Wrap, insert in. Wrap through two, wrap through two. And it ends up being like a little mantra as you're doing it. So it's like wrap in, pull up, wrap through two, wrap through two. And it doesn't, I mean, if I just get Sarah to show you this little bit a moment, you can see that it does show you all that on the um, on the leaflet that we sent out to anybody who requested it. Hopefully you've all got that. And also there's a, um, there's a couple of really nice videos, um, tutorials that I well. So if you go onto YouTube, hi, if you go onto YouTube, um, onto Bella Coco, um, she has some absolutely brilliant online tutorials, basically telling you exactly what I'm doing here. Um, but it's in a lot of the stuff on YouTube is American. So again, it can be quite confusing with the terminology, but Bella Coco is, um, it's a British lady and she's, um, she does some really, really fab tutorials, definitely worth looking. But again, I'll put a link on our Facebook page for that for you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to work my way down just towards the end. Carrie doesn't like crochet. It makes her brain hurt. <laughs> it's like learning any new skill, honey. But I promise you it's worth it. <clears throat> when you've got it, it's genuinely, it's really, it's good fun. And it's so good for your blood pressure, um, crochet and knitting. Due to the rhythmical nature of it, um, it can actually help lower your blood pressure. Um, and these stressful days that we're having at the moment... So if, so if you can just come back a minute, what I'm doing is I'm just coming up <coughs> towards the end and I just want to make sure that you guys get that end stitch. OK, so you're going to pull up and through, through and then the end of the stitch. OK, and this last piece here, this is a stitch here. OK, it's quite easy to think that that's not a stitch. OK, but there is actually one here. OK, so we're going to go into that last one like that okay and get that end stitch so you've got a straight edge Take here yeah there we go okay so i'm not sure where Sarah's going she's off she's off on a little little thing um but yeah can you see so hopefully the thing here on the trebles showing, showing you the trebles ha ah, here we go she was bringing me a stitch marker okay so little tip when you're starting out use a safety pin or a stitch marker either or just something Mark that end stitch. So if you, when you've finished it, just put the, I'm trying to do this so camera is not easy. There we go. Just pop the stitch marker through that end and you will need one each end if you're going backwards and forwards. You know that when you come back towards this way, you have to hit that stitch. Okay. There's when, if we were coming back, you know, if you get to here, you can see that there's a stitch marker. That is a stitch. You want to make sure you, you catch that. Okay. It's very easy to, to forget the end and then you end up with your work doing this and you end up with triangles instead of rectangles. It does actually work. <laughs> I now have stitch markers on both ends of my work and it is um, straight. It's amazing what happens no, shh. when she listens to me. It's only taken me five years, but she finally listened. <laughs> no, I'd rather so. crochet in the round. I haven't got yeah. any <laughs> Okay, so then you would start, you start your... Um, your row again okay so you're going to go up like that and then you're going to go along and work through those holes so there's your holes there at the top okay so um got somebody in the shop so so i was just going to go and deal with them so i'm going to take the phone a Answer. second emma emma how can you get one of those crochet leaflets emma if you drop us a um email to shop at white gecko events.co.uk um our email address is on our facebook page i will i will email you back with a, a pdf copy of this leaflet okay francis can't get the hang of holding the wool it's not easy and you will find your own sort of rhythm with it okay you will um it takes a while it takes practice but um check out some some different ways of holding it online um and find what works for you sometimes it's worth trying changing the hook so the hook is on the you know so you're holding it as a spoon rather than a you know so you're holding as a spoon like that rather than a pen some people find that easier to control the yarn um i i was taught to hold it this way so like i'm i'm writing so holding it as a pen and that seems to work for me okay so um but yeah with regards to wrapping the wool and everything um don't worry too much as long as so i tend to i don't know if you can see 
I tend to put it up over my middle f uh, index finger and trap it in between my index and my middle finger like that okay so that I'm working in this bit here okay I'm working into and that way you can kind of keep the tension on the wool and I'm always working into that section there okay right I'm going to go through one other stitch with you okay and then what I'm going to do is um in fact actually no I'm not going to go with another stitch we'll do that another day what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to start a granny square blanket all right because that's something that if you can do get the hang of it it's one of the easiest things to do and it's a very repetitive thing so it will really get these stitches like set in your head okay so I'm going to uh, as soon as Sarah's back uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to give the phone back to her but I'm going to frog all this out and get rid of all this take all this out or not because the stitch markers in the way <laughs> So we really need to get a little tripod for our phones, I think. Okay, so Sarah's on her way back now. Oh, you love There we go. Yeah. So I'm just going to take this out, and what I'm going to do is show you how to start a granny square blanket. Because granny square blankets are done with just trebles and chains. So you don't have to learn any other stitches, and you can certainly get going on it, okay? And with all the instructions of this... <laughs> Um, and Bella Coke has a really, really good tutorial as well. Okay, so <clears throat> it might be that you just watch along with this. If you want to crochet along as well, that's absolutely fine. So I'm back to the beginning. All right, I'm going to do a slip knot. So do you remember a circle? Grab the wool and oh, <laughs> be right if I did it right, wouldn't it? Grab the wool and pull through. Okay, and there's my slip knot. Now, to start off the granny square, okay, I'm going to do a chain of four. So one, two, three, okay, and I'm going to insert my hook into that very first stitch there, okay, so can you see like the number one stitch here? I'm going to insert the hook into there, I'm going to wrap the wool round and pull through. And then I'm going to pull it straight through there, okay? <coughs> oh my god, Sarah just needs to get a drink of water. Yes. Okay, right. Carrie, I'm going to start again with you. Okay, right, I'm going to do that again, do that starting again. Sarah's asthma's playing up terrible today. She's, uh, she's had to take a nebulizer a couple of times. So, I'm going to start with a slip knot. So we're going to go round, put our fingers through and pull up that yarn. Okay. And you're going to pop that onto your wool, onto your, your needle, your hook even. It's a hook, not a needle. Okay. And you're going to chain four. So wrap. And you can see I'm holding it quite here to get my hook through. One. Wrap. Two. Wrap. Three. And then wrap and four. Okay. So I've got a little chain of four. I'm going to insert the hook into the first chain here, the one furthest away from the hook, okay? So that's going to go into there. I'm going to wrap my wool and pull through. And then I'm going to pull it. I'm not going to wrap again. I'm going to put it straight through there, okay? That's called a slip stitch. And all that is is a joining stitch. A slip stitch is just a joining stitch. And can you see you've got a little ring like that, okay? So you've got a little ring now. And this bit here, where you could see my finger, where you can see my nail, that is where we're going to be working. You know, previously we were working into the chains. Well, for the start of a granny square, this is where you're going to be working. Okay. Uh, Sandra Hatton, if you've quilted the quilts made the other Sunday, do you want... Oh, yeah. Um, I'll drop you a message about that in a minute, Sandra, okay? Because uh, I can't keep going with that at the moment. <laughs> so. Hi, Jackie. Now, as we're going to chain two... So you're going to chain one, two, okay? And that make gets the height, just like when we were starting on um, on the rows, okay? Because you need to get some height before you start. And then we're going to do our trebles into this bit here where my finger is. So I'm going to wrap. I'm going to set my hook into the centre circle. Wrap and pull through. So can you see it's through that, that wall is through there wrap through two wrap through two okay 
and try again. So wrap into the centre circle and pull through. Wrap through two, wrap through two. And what you've got now is a little cluster of three stitches. So you've got the chain which is pretending to be a stitch and you've got two trebles. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully so far. You're now going to chain two. So you're going to chain one, two. Okay, and this is going to make a little corner space. Now you're going to do three trebles into that ring again. Okay, so we're going to wrap into the ring and pull through. Wrap through two, wrap through two. And you're going to repeat that again. So wrap in, pull up, through two, wrap through two, and then the third one. So wrap, in, pull up. Can you see, as I'm pulling up as well, I'm giving myself a fighting chance and I'm giving it a bit of a wiggle. Give your hook a wiggle and allow that hook. You don't want to keep it really, really tight like this. You want to give it a wiggle and give yourself a fighting chance. Okay, so through two, and through two. So you've got another little cluster of three stitches. So one, two, three. I'm going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to put another three trebles in there. So in, pull up, through two, through two, in, wrap in and pull up, through two, through two, wrap in pull up through two through two and there you go there's a third set of three one two three so i need to make my corner space two and then we're going to do our last set of three because the square's got four sides so you need four sets of three so one two and you can see it's getting quite quite busy in there now quite full so you want to make sure you're going into the center and three okay what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set try and keep it in the top so people can see it not through the comments because they can see the comments as well yeah yeah <laughs> okay so if you try and keep it up there people go no, right. and then i'm gonna do the last two stitches one two and I'm going to join into that first chain that you did here. I'm going to join into the top there with a slip stitch. So I'm going to go into that top stitch there. Hang on. Into that top stitch there. Pull that yarn through. And then I'm going to put it straight through. Okay. And then you can, hopefully you can see you've got a little square with three sets of three on them. And little space at the corners. Four sets of three. Sorry, four sets of three. Because <laughs> it's four sides, it's not a triangle. Okay, so you've got, the, that was your initial chain. And then one, two. And then we did two chains, which are making this little hole here, which will be your corners. And then one. There's your corner. One, two, three. There's your corner. One, two, three. There's your corner. And then we joined into the top there. Okay. So in order to start the next round, you want to get to this corner here. So you need to move this yarn right the way across. OK, now there are lots and lots of different ways of doing granny squares. Um, I find this the easiest way because you're always starting in a corner. So it's the easiest, easiest to teach it this way. OK, if um, you can start from here and but you have to do a lot more extra counting. So if you always, always have to get to the corners, I just think as a beginner, it's a lot, lot easier. Hi, Jill. Thanks for joining us. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch. So we're going to go into that first bit there and we're just going to slip stitch along. So it's not a it's not a growth stitch. It's just a moving stitch. Long. OK, so you're going to go in, wrap and pull straight through. And can you see they sit really flat? And all we're doing is going along the top of the, the square to get to this corner okay so then we're going to go into that corner space and slip stitch there we go so now my wool hopefully you guys can see this now my wool is in this corner space 
okay so I need to get the height again because this is the start of a new row so we're going to chain two one two okay and then I'm going to put another two trebles into this hole so wrap down up and through and through and another one wrap down and up and through and through and there we go there's another set now so your chain is acting as a treble and you've got two more trebles because it's a corner it needs two chain spaces so there we go two chains and then we're going to put another three into this corner space so round through through two through two round pick up through two through two pick up through two through two so I'm just going to stop there a second so you can see so this was the original chain that I did and then I put two trebles into this gap here okay hopefully you can see that hopefully it's giving you some focus in and okay then I did two chains to make another corner piece okay and then I've done another three trebles now we're working along the side here so I'm just going to chain one okay and we're straight into another corner here okay. why do you chain one you chain one to give yourself a little space so when we do the next round you're in that chain one space in this these spaces here underneath the chains you're going to be putting a little cluster of three okay so chain one and then we're back into a corner so what's that what's it? Mm. just checking that nobody smashed into a car anywhere right outside there was a hell of a bang so you're going to wrap in pull up wrap through two wrap through two wrap in pull up wrap through two wrap through two so I'm going to do this corner and we're going to carry on filming how you're doing is is any of this making sense to you, any of you guys yet are you all okay with this it might feel slight if you were if you were ever taught by your grannies it might feel slightly familiar how you're doing let us know because Sarah can uh, can read the comments if uh, well I that helps so I'm going through, you know, am I going slow enough for you guys? Is this okay? Is this working all right? Can you actually see what I'm doing? <laughs> Let us know, okay? It is a little bit confusing to start with, okay? So there you can see, hopefully you can see the second corner is done. So you've got three and then two and then three, okay? So because it's on a side piece, I'm going to chain one. And then we're going to go over to this one here. So round through like this. Let us know if you're still there, ladies. How are you doing? What's, uh, what's everybody up to? How, how stir crazy are you all getting? Anybody uh, all been uh, climbing the walls yet? Is your ha are your houses all sparkling clean? Have you taken to cleaning out of boredom yet? I nearly nearly did that yesterday, but you know the urge overcame me and I was like, sod that. <laughs> so how are you all doing? Everyone okay? Anybody out there? Are you still all there? <laughs> okay, so there we go. There's the third corner done. So again, I've done three trebles. One, two, three. Two chains. And then one, two, three. Okay. And then we're going to work on this last corner here. So you're going to... Francis Deans is enthralled. Oh, I'm glad, uh, glad you're enjoying it, lovely. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to do this last corner here. So... Another three trebles through two, through two. There we go. Through two, through two. Ooh. Nice thing about this as well if you drop a stitch when you're uh, knitting, it tends to all unravel. It's nice and easy to pick back up. And then there's my third one. <laughs> Bryce still breathing. Yes. <laughs> oh, bless him. <laughs> there we go. And then two chains. And then I'm going to put my last little cluster of three trebles in here. Okay, so one, two, and it it is a little bit complicated until you get your head around it, lovely. But I think the nice thing with the granny 
granny square where you can just keep going it's very very repetitive it's over and over um the same same stitches and they just get the, it gets bigger and bigger as you grow it grows um so it kind of sets that stitch in your head it's a really good one to uh you know to sort of start with so there's everybody doing angela you've got washing on the line excellent it's um just while well, yeah i'm just going to talk at you for a second um yeah my husband's uh just been out trying to find a monitor and a desk and everywhere is sold out because it's uh i got a small tv which will work oh he's managed to find a small he's bought himself a small tv to work off instead so uh so yeah so Not because everybody's home working sorry i'm gonna sh actually take that out and uh show you so now we've finished i've chained one and we're going to join into that the top of that starting chain Do you remember that starting chain did so i'm going to join into the very top so you slip stitch in so you're going to push in can you see i'm making sure i go through both sides pull through and then pull straight through okay so this it's just a joining stitch so flat hopefully sarah can get this in okay so <coughs> this is where we started and we did the chain okay and we did one two and then you two chains and then one two three in your first corner chain one one two three two chains one two three trebles one chain on the side another cluster of three so one two three two chain spaces and then one two three one chain in the middle and then one two three two chain one two three and then one chain and we've slip stitched so you've got your four sides and can you see these are your corner spaces here okay like that right i'm going to go and do what i'm going to do one more round with you so you can see what happens when you're not on a corner okay because at the minute we've just been dealing with lots and lots of corners haven't we it's all been all been corners but this time you've got a corner and then you've got a side piece and then a corner and those side pieces obviously get bigger and bigger oh linda's saying she wish she'd known she's got a small 19 inch monitor in the yeah, attic you could have had my plans uh, never mind thanks though lind thanks he spent the money now. I could I could have had new shoes with that. No, Disgraceful. No. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do is going to do one more round with this, and then I'm going to leave you guys alone so that you can rewatch this, and I'm going to post some videos as well. So with some links to some videos on YouTube. Okay. So do you remember to start a new row? We need to get over to this corner. So I'm going to push the hook into this next stitch here, and slip stitch. So bring the wool through and through straight away so I'm just moving that wool along and then into the corner pick up and then move it along and, and the stitch is in the corner okay oh yeah I, well, it, hopefully uh, Bruce is okay I mean the health and safety is uh, is everybody's really hot on it at the moment aren't they so hopefully it'll be all okay <coughs> Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start this new row. So to get the height, you need to go one, two, chain two. Some people will find that their chains are really, really tight and you need to do a third chain. I'm, I'm quite a loose crocheter, so I only ever do two, but sometimes you need to do three, okay? Chain two, but for me, chain two to get that height. And then I'm going to put two trebles into that corner space, okay? So in, pull up, through two through two and then round in pull up through two through two and there's your first cluster okay so your chain acts as a treble and there's your first two okay because this is this is a pretend stitch okay and then we're going to put two chains in for the space so one two and then we're going to put two tre three trebles in so there's the first treble there's the second treble and then there's the third treble okay on a side I'm going to chain one in between and can you see now so this is my corner of here so I've got this space here so I need to put a cluster of three trebles in there so I'm going to put three into that one there and you can you see I'm going into the space I'm not going into any stitches I'm actually working over that wool into the space so there's one. Oh, don't split the wool. <laughs> Two. 
three okay so you can see there's my corner this is a, a side one so there's only just one one cluster of three there I'm going to chain one and then I'm back to a corner so this is where I'm going to put two sets of three into here okay so we're going to go one two three okay chain two one two to make my corner and then I'm going to go another three in there so one excuse me a second and another one third and then I'm back to a side piece so it would be chain one and then three into this side piece here. So wrap in, up, wrap, two, through two. There we go, okay? So we're going back to a side piece. So there's just three in this, on that side panel there, okay? So can you see, so I've got a corner here, which is three, two chains and three trebles. One chain, it's just by themselves because we're on the side and then into a corner and then I've done three on a side and then I'm back to a corner here. You can see now that on your next round, okay, so this is a corner here, you'd have, you'd do a corner, which is your three trebles, two chain, three trebles into here, chain one, and you do a set of three into that one and a set of three into that one because the sides as you get bigger are getting longer so you've got more, more space and you do two lots one lot of three in there chain one one lot of three in there chain one and then you'd be back on your corner and on the row after that there'll be three holes so you'll do three sets of three and then four sets of three as you keep going hopefully that made sense so I'm gonna leave it there because I don't want to confuse you guys too much okay watch the video back leave me lots of comments give us a call if you want me to explain any of it, email okay? if they want the PDF. Email if you want the PDF, okay? And we can send you this through. I'm going to put on our Facebook page some links um, to some really useful online tutorials. So you'll have mine and there'll be others out there as well, okay? Um, so, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Um, hi, Ali. <laughs> hi. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, thank you so much for um, letting me talk at you for nearly an hour. Um, just a quick reminder, we are shut in today, okay? So from three o'clock today, the shop's not going to be open to the public. But just ring us, okay? I'm going to have the phone diverted to my mobile. Just give us a call, okay? Stay safe, everybody. Stay indoors as much as possible. Um, we are, we'll still do deliveries, but we'll do, like I was saying, non-contact deliveries. So we'll knock to let you know your parcel's there. Stand well back so that we know you've got the goods and then, you, you know, no contact, okay? Um, but thank you for thank you for joining me. Hopefully everything's made sense and we'll be back tomorrow at one o'clock and I'm gonna do some English paper piecing with you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.